driving through many parts of the country, you will definitely get to see plantations of eucalyptus trees in farms and forests. It is a tree that has gained popularity over time due to its ability to grow fast, hence boosting the economy of those who plant them. However, to others, it is a curse to the environment and should be banned in totality as it is responsible for the drying up of rivers and watersheds. This has led Imenti Central Member of Parliament Moses Grima to file a motion in Parliament to ban planting and uprooting of all eucalyptus trees in the country. According to Kirima, there are reasons why the tree should be banned in the country. Kirima cited the ability of eucalyptus tree to degrade the soil by taking away nutrients such as nitrogen, water depletion, habitat loss, negative impact on climate change, and socio-economic impact as reasons the tree should be banned in Kenya. The question in the minds of many is, should we ban or not ban eucalyptus? We moved to Kenya for a service headquarters at the Department of Tree Biotechnology to find out more from the experts. Here you will find thousands of eucalyptus seedlings ready for planting, especially during the ongoing rain season. You will likely find farmers here who come to buy the seedlings, while others buy from afar, and the seedlings are sent as a parcel. You also have retail commercial farmers, meaning I have land, I can't plant maize, I can't plant anything else, so what I want to do is to plant trees, because trees are very easy to manage because once I plant after one year the rest is very easy so that we have customers who are doing it commercially and then also we have customers who are doing it uh, because they want to get based on what they want to achieve like the builders the builders want to get the shutter the ones so the ones they do the scaffolding and all that they want to get poles as well maybe tiba as well when the tree gets into mature age we spoke to Dr. Ben Kenyi who is the director of Tree Biotechnology Program Trust, which is involved in trees research, especially eucalyptus trees species, who says that eucalyptus tree has been given a negative publicity without scientific backup. It's a 21-year-old program, and the main thrust has been to bring technologies in propagation of trees, measuring on eucalyptus. And the trees we propagate are hybrid trees. First time in Kenya to have hybrid trees. As an institution, we do not do things without studying. The first thing we did is to conduct trials across the country. We have 24 trial sites from the coast all the way to the western Kenya to understand the effects of these hybrids, particularly because they were the first time, how they are going to affect our, our environment, including the soil, and including other relationships with other vegetation. We are farmers um, who do not know the guidelines and the others who do not know where they are supposed to be planted because um, occasionally you find them uh, being planted along waterways and in catchment areas. They shouldn't be planted in those areas. The researchers say lack of information about the eucalyptus is the reason why the tree has been viewed as a threat to the environment. If you want firewood, if you want charcoal, if you want timber, the best species to grow is eucalyptus because then it will be able to give you the returns very quickly. I think it's just a bit of uh, educating farmers and those who are de dealing with eucalyptus or those who want to, to, to plant eucalyptus where, to, where best to, to plant it. To produce cellulose, which is actually carbon, it is eucalyptus. It loses very little water because it's able to convert the water it takes up most of it into cellulose. And that's why it is important for carbon sequestration. Eucalyptus is the most efficient block of carbon. Why? Because it converts all the minerals it gets and the water to produce wood, which is cellulose, and that is carbon. Research shows that the current demand for power transmission poles in the country is about 450,000 poles per year. Eucalyptus poles are seen to be in a position to meet this demand. But as the country gears towards increasing its forest cover to 30% by the year 2032, 
Experts believe that by sidelining eucalyptus tree planting, the targets will not be met. And I don't think we can talk of forestry in Kenya really without talking, especially commercial forestry, without talking of eucalyptus. And I don't think we can be able to do away with the eucalyptus species. If you're saying we cut down eucalyptus, how shall we get the, the target that we want to get as a country? We cut what is growing very fast and we leave what is not growing very fast. So if we were to cut eucalyptus, where would you get the paper? It would be mean closing down institutions. There are laid down guidelines as to how to plant eucalyptus trees in the country. The guidelines shows where to plant and not to plant. Eucalyptus should not be planted in wetlands and marshy areas, riparian areas, and along rivers one should reserve not less than 30 meters and allow for an extra 20 meters to ensure that the trees do not adversely interfere with the water source. Irrigate and farmlands, areas with less than 400 millimeter rainfall, among other guidelines. Even in Europe, if you go to France, Portugal, Spain, they have thousands of hectares of eucalypts. If you go to Israel, in the very dry areas of the Najib Desert, you find eucalyptus growing under in areas where they receive more, less than 400 millimeters of rain a year. A very dry place. If you go to Asia, India, China, Indonesia, they are now the global leading growers of eucalyptus. The guidelines stipulate where eucalyptus trees should be planted. They include degraded areas through soil erosion and loss of soil fertility, as shelter belts and weed breakers on large scale farms, water logged areas or areas with saline soils. So whatever eucalypts you see, let's remember they are different ones. There are some that grow in very dry areas. We know that our country is 70% semi-arid and arid. We have varieties, particularly when you do hybrids, where we can be able to grow trees in our savannas. If you travel from here to Mombasa, you pass through open fields. We should be cropping them. And we have varieties through science. We can be able to interbreed through science and produce hybrids that can do well in those areas. That is what has happened in Brazil. Eucalyptus trees were introduced in the country as early as 1902 by the colonial government to provide energy for the locomotives. Since then, about 100 species have been planted in the country. As the debate rages on whether or not to ban eucalyptus in the country, experts are calling for a sober approach so as not to shoot ourselves on the foot. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are saying uh, leaders and politicians need to be careful not to condemn something. Yes, yes. And we have hosted here even uh, 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 members of parliament, the former member of parliament for the Science and Technology Committee. Mm -hmm. We have been put to Parliament uh, and met the previous year and met the, the Committee for Forestry and Environment. We sat down with them in Parliament. Mm. We have hosted them. Dan Kaburu, K24, The Voice of Nature.